how did you go from a piano to upright bass? It was upright bass, right? Yeah. And then how'd you go from upright bass to electric bass? Because things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, when I went into junior high school, I kind of went in with the attitude, your piano player has arrived. And Ted Lynn, that good, Ted, Ted Lynn, who was the music teacher, and the school I went to, Birmingham, was a six-year school. It was six to 12 in there. It wasn't a separate junior high oh, school. Oh, I high see, school. Right. So I had the same teachers for, for right. six years in there. First day in school in the music department, I you know, kind of said, oh, I play piano. He goes, we have a lot of piano players. We need a string bass player. And he pulled an old K upright out of the back room and showed me how to hold it. And I plucked a note on that and felt that vibration. And I just went, okay. So he took me aside and gave me some rudimentary lessons on, on what it was all. Because within like three months, we cut a junior high school dance band album playing it like Autumn Leaves and all these things. And I've still got that at home. I mean, it's really great. But it was one of those things. It, it, it's it's your, your life is like all these roads that suddenly splay out and there's different roads. You, and you try to just, you hope that you're following the right path that day, but none of them necessarily are wrong. No. You just follow that. And, and so no, for me, uh, when he pulled that out, so, so I ended up with upright teachers on it and, and, and really classical and jazz oriented more than anything. Of course, for that. But reason. suddenly I started joining bands and playing rock. And this was like in the 60s. So, uh, well, th yeah, this was in the 60s. And so, like, rock was just coming in strong. And it was well, the Beatles, electric. the Beatles well, yeah. really changed everything that for changed all of for everybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was playing with these bands and my hands were bleeding because I'm trying to play over drums and oh, yeah. electric guitars. So, my dad finally took me to it, it, it's been Stein on Vine for for decades, but, but the Stein music originally was in the musicians union building. And my dad took me there and bought me a, um, melody bass and a St. George amp. And all of a sudden I was a contender in the bands I was playing with. I could be heard. I was still playing upright at that point, but I didn't have an upright. So when I want, had anything to do, they would let me take the one from school with me and some like walking two miles home, lugging an upright bass and shit. Um, but uh, we would play, I, I worked with some guys down at, um, at like the lighthouse. Um, so one of the greatest things was in like 1963, I was in a group called the John Gross Quartet and John Gross was a sax player who's still in town here. Um, and a, and a keyboard player named Stanley Seal, who was like so insane. He built his own pipe organ in his Jesus. house and stuff. Um, and, and, and a drummer on this, and we would go play all these jazz gigs and stuff. Well, the weird thing was, uh, at a certain point I heard that the, after we had, we had worked for a while and then split up, the drummer had taken a gig over in Europe and, uh, young cat went over there and got died in an accident. But apparently what I had heard was decapitated in one of those cage elevators in France, like looking through to see where they came by and lopped his head off. <sighs> well, that the drummer was Don Lombardi. And, You're uh, and I was at that point, I was, we would play his, they, they, his brother had a restaurant in downtown LA called Lombardi's and we play there. I was at, um, Louis Belson's funeral. Yeah. Um, and I was standing around and Terry Bozio comes over. And so we're, I've known Terry for a long time. So yeah. we're sitting and talking. He goes, so you got to meet a friend of mine. He brings up, he says, this, Lee, this is Don Lombardi. And I look at him, I go, were we in a band in 1963? And he goes, yeah, with John and Stanley. I said, I heard, well, it turns out that he was supposed to be on that gig. A guy did get killed on this gig, yeah. but it wasn't him. But for decades, I thought, I had no idea he started DW drums and had Latin percussion. Yeah. I mean, he's one of the most successful one guys. One of the most successful the American. And I thought he was dead all these years. So it was one of those moments I'm looking, I'm going, I thought you'd been dead for like <laughs> decades. It was just a surreal. Surreal, yeah. Because you literally thought he, he, he was, was dead. Yeah. <laughs> there were so many little things like this that happened throughout. Yeah. Our, you know, we've all experienced this. The more you're around people. Yeah. And, and. You know, like there's people that have jobs where it's a small circle that their job exposes them to over the years. It's, you know, a tight little company. I mean, we know so many people and so many have come and gone because of lifestyle choices yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just finished six weeks with Lyle and lost seven people during the six weeks. 
that I was on the road. Six, seven people died during that period. Yeah. You know, David Lindley and David Crosby. Oh, dude. All these people. And Michael just, Rhodes. It's just like, oh, yeah. damn. And it's just shocking at times. Yeah, you look you, at your phone and it's like. You, well, you're almost afraid, like when you talk to people, you almost afraid, how's so-and-so? You don't want to hear. Yeah. Because for a while, it was they were getting divorced all the time. Yeah. But I remember, like, I was at Home Depot one day, and this guy I knew was there, and he, and he came up to me, and he goes, have you heard about Chris Bond? And I went, oh, fuck, really? Because Chris Bond, I had worked with as a producer. We did early um, Hall & Oates stuff together, all kinds of stuff. And and I thought he was dead. And he goes, no, he's Chris Bond now. Oh, that I was said, a thank God. Thank God. And we finally tracked each other down, and, and he had had a, a, a yeah. total sex change yeah. operation. And he was happy for the first time in his life in the wow. same way of Christina Pataki yeah. from Capital was Charlie Pataki all the years that, that I worked at Capital, and Charlie became a woman. Oh, but did, he, but he became that. the woman he really always yeah. wanted to be. So I was grateful with them that I wasn't hearing that more people had died. Yeah. 